Week seven, problem one. All right, this week we get to learn about magnetism. For each charge, determine the direction of the magnetic force. For the last one, determine the direction of the magnetic field. The sign of the charge is given for each part. Okay, so the equation we're gonna go for this guy, I'm gonna write this over here in the beginning, is, let's see here, nope, oh, there we go. Force equals Q V cross B. This will be a vector. This will be a vector. That'll be a vector. So the secret here is cross products. Um, they're going to give you some kind of crazy right hand rule where you just kind of pow. Or they go pow. Then you know what the answer is. Um, that's not how I learned cross products. Actually, that probably is how I learned cross products, which is why I was terrible at them for the longest time. So I'm going to show you how I do cross products, and then we will apply that knowledge to um, how to do these magnetic uh, force equals QV cross V problems. Make this guy a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing here. And this has a team. All right. So when you have uh, V cross B or A cross B or whatever cross whatever, I like to start with my hand like this. So you have your hand flat, thumb pointing out. So you point your hand in the direction of the first uh, first symbol. So V in this case. So we have V cross B. So pointing cross in the direction of V and then cross B, then you point it in the direction of B. So let's say we have V going this way. Mm, that's supposed to be left to right. There we go. Then we have B, standard B, going, man, you are, there we go, going down. So we have V to the right, V down. So the way I would go through this guy is, so we have V cross B, we have V going this direction, and then you bend this guy down. So then your direction then would be, I guess, towards you guys. Yeah, however, you understand where this is going. All right, so let's say instead B was going up, so it'd be V cross B. So now it would be going the other direction. And you can point B in any direction you want. Okay? Another small tidbit of life is this cross product right there is represented by sine. It would make sense if cross products were um, cosine because, you know, C's and C, you can make a great mnemonic, but it's not. It's a trap. It's not. That's not how life works. Though it should be. Someday when I'm in charge of mathematics, I will change it. But until then, we have to deal with what we got. Okay? So that's the basics behind this problem. So let's get started. So we have for each charge, so we have um, the first one here. We have direction of V and B, and we have a positive charge. So looking at this, we're going to do V cross B and Q. All right. So, we have, let me make this guy a little bit bigger again. Hope. Enhance. There we go. Mm, but now it's not, I didn't do the proportion. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. So we have V, V, cross B. So it's going to be uh, outward. So it's going to be out of the page. And then positive so it's going to actually be out of the page. So I'm going to draw this guy as whoop like this. Darn you. Draw a little dark circle. There we go. So in case you're unfamiliar with this notation, this is into the board while this is out. Maybe make it smaller. Maybe that'll make it happy. There we go. So the way you think of this as an arrow, like an old Robin Hood style flesh, um, if you're looking at the arrow going away, you're going to see the little feathers. Um, oh, there's a name for those. Fleshettes. I think they're called fleshettes. An arrow is called a flesh, and a fleshette is not important. All right, and then if an arrow is coming towards you, it happens to be like a round arrow, not an arrow-shaped arrow then all you see is the point. So into the page, out of the page. 
So for this guy, so we have V, oh, V cross B. So in that way. Okay, going on to the next one. So, ah, this guy, if you look at it, it's exactly the same. So we take the, uh, we took this, and we rotated the whole thing 90 degrees, we get the exact same thing we have for the first one. But it's a trick because the charge is negative. So what we do is we do V, actually, I'm going to do it this way, V cross B. So it's out of the page, out of the page. But it's negative, so it's going to be opposite direction. So we're going to do, hop, bam, right like that. So you're like, what? Where did you come up with that whole negative idea? The negative idea is right here, because you multiply Q, V, cross B. So that Q has an effect. As far as direction goes, it doesn't really matter, except for the uh, positive or negative. All right. So now they give us one where they are not perpendicular. Well, I have a general rule in life where I only deal with perpendiculars. So I'm going to redraw. Ooh, actually, I'm going to use green. I am going to use green. Oh, there we go. So oh, that's a terrible green. That's like a puke green. All right. Whoop. There we go. So these are the, I'm going to decompose the uh, magnetic vector into two vectors. Um, we're going to have, yeah, I'll call this like the x component right here. Whoop, whoop. And this will be the y component right there. All right. So the idea here is we can do both of them, then just add them together. Well, the port, the component of the magnetic field that is parallel, oh, parallel with the uh, velocity vector is going to be zero because we have sine of theta. If the angle between the magnetic field and the velocity, uh, between the magnetic vector and the velocity vector is zero, then the sine of zero is going to be zero, so it's not going to matter at all. So we basically totally ignore this guy right there. Gone, dead, dead to us. And um, this portion right here is going to ha have 90 degrees, so that's the only portion we consider. So we're going to do V cross B into the board. And it's positive, so it is actually into the board. So hoop, make a little X. Perfect, got it. All right, this guy. So now it's going to be V into the board. So it's going to be to the left. So we're going to have it going this direction. This will be the force. This will be finding the force, right? There we go. Magnetic force. Yep. And it's positive. I'm going to change from green because I grow wary of green. Alright. Ah. So this guy, we have a whoop, theta equals equals 180. Ugh, you're terrible. 180 degrees. So that 180, uh, sine of 180 is zero, therefore none. Don't even know, need to know if it's negative or positive because negative zero is the same as positive zero. All right, now this guy, again, don't like to use um, anything that's not perpendicular. Um, let's see here, try, I'll try to do it this way. There we go. That's a vector decomposition. All right, and then this guy will be V. All right, so V cross B will be, all right, so now we're going in this direction. B cross B, all right, so we'll be into the board. Oop. Into the board. Let's see what, and, oh, it's negative, so I'm wrong. So negative, I'm gonna go the opposite direction. Oop. Now it's out of the board. There we go. All right, now I got another one here. So we got V. Ooh, that's focusing. Huh? Let's see if I can get to focus on the hand. V cross B, upwards. But it's negative, so it's going to be downwards. Bam, let's go down. Force. All right. Now, we got to find the magnetic vector, and they give us force. And it's positive, so we don't have to do any reverse uh, Reverserinos, as they say. <laughs> I'm pretty sure no one actually says that. All right, so the way I'm going to do this is just guess and check. And if it works, then I'm going to go with it. So V cross B. No, that doesn't work because that had the force going in the page. So it looks like 
V cross B gives a force up. Okay, okay, so we're good now. So I just gotta do that again. So V is going this direction, magnetic field is going that direction, so that magnetic field is going in. So V cross B, yep. So magnetic field is going into the board. No actual knowledge or understanding there. I am just guessing and checking, because there's only so many options here. Only so many options. And eventually you'll pick, one that, pick the right one. And it's just quicker than trying to actually logically think through it. Um, you do it six or seven times and you'll kind of, you'll become a better guesser, but that's all that you need for that one. All right, and that is your introduction to magnetism and problem one. All right, see you on problem two.